Okay, so this is the practice exam for the first exam in Math 241, Fall of 2012. So we're going to do one of the harder questions first. It says, find the derivative of the function using the method of increments. <clears throat> so what the method of increments means is not the easy way. Um, so you have to set it up as a limit or as a ratio of delta f over delta x, whichever way you prefer to think of it. So let me... Um, I could just get started because there's a formula and if you're the kind of person who prefers to just work with a formula all you have to do is find <coughs> the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So I know that that formula, while it's, you know, the simplest thing is just to mindlessly use the formula, it will give some people conniptions. So let's do it nice and slow and remind ourselves geometrically where that comes from. So it's not so hard to draw a picture of this thing because um, it's a quadratic, so you know that it graphs as a parabola, and there's no constant part, so you can factor out an x and the skills that you learned in pre-algebra let you draw a picture easily. So if you factor out a 2x, then what do you get? You get x plus uh, 3 halves x. Um, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. This is, this is just 3 halves. Um, so you have 2x times x plus 3 halves. So what are, what are the zeros of, of this? So 1 zero is just plugging in zero, so that geometrically means that it's a parabola that goes through the origin. And the other zero happens when you plug in negative three halves for x. So the other the other little part of the parabola is there and it's an upward facing parabola because the leading coefficient is positive, so blah blah blah. And so I can draw a pretty good picture. <laughs> or let's just say that one could draw a pretty good picture. Let me try again. So uh, it'll look something like this. Okay. All right. And so this is the big picture. And now let me kind of, what are we trying to do? Okay. We're trying to find the derivative. So remember how the derivative works. You put a point into the derivative and then what the derivative does, you know, f prime is the notation for the derivative. When you put a point into it, it spits out <coughs> the slope of the tangent line. So it spits out the slope of the tangent to um, f at whatever point you put in, like in this case, x1. All right, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that thing where I draw the two points and connect them with the secant line and then remind you how the definition of the limit relates to that thing that I wrote uh, when I first started this video and also how it relates to solving this problem. So I need to draw a picture of a curve that actually has a little bit of a curve to it, like maybe this, okay. So let me just say that I'm, I'm looking at just a part of the parabola. So here is the parabola that we were looking at, y equals f of x, you know where f is this thing. And let's say we're trying to figure out what the I could say x1 here, but I'm just going to say x, okay. So how, um, how is it that we find the tangent line? So remember what we do is we find the secant line by going over a little bit. And you can use delta x to designate the amount by which we go over, but also you can use h. So I'm going to use h, and I, I need some room here to write my h. So I've got this little triangle that you can see. I'm going to use a different color. So here is h. So that is the this side of the triangle. Okay, that's how long that is. And the triangle also has a height. Okay, and it's a little bit harder to see, but we've been over it many times. The height of the triangle is given by f of x plus h minus f of x. All right, and why is that true? It's you can kind of think of it like this. So f of x plus h is this whole length. Okay, but what you need to do to get just the blue part 
is take away this little segment. And what is the little segment? Why? It's just f of x because it's the same height as this. Okay, so anyway, long story short. So the blue side of the triangle is this expression, <clears throat> and the red side of the triangle is just h. Now, we saw the ratio of those two things earlier, right? And the reason we look at the ratio is because that is the slope of the line that connects these two points. So here's the line that connects these two points. And that line that I just drew has slope exactly this. And now the trick to computing the derivative is to let h go to 0. And so what happens is h goes to 0 as this side of the triangle gets moved to the left. And then as h shrinks, you know, it becomes smaller and smaller. And um, in the limit, what you get is the tangent line. So what happens in the limit is a little philosophical. But, um, the way we're going to do it is just playing around with numbers, right? So, uh, philosophy free. So I'll remind you, this is the expression, okay? And we can't forget what the function is, because the next thing to do once you have this expression is to is to plug in what f actually is, which is this stuff. Okay, so let's do that. <clears throat> so f of x plus h. Maybe we'll just do it piece by piece. So f of x plus h is 2 times x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h. Okay, and now you have to expand all this stuff. So this equals 2 times, now I'll multiply out this uh, binomial, so FOIL it or whatever. So x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And now I've still got this thing. Maybe I could just copy it. Modern technology. Copy. Oops, don't want to steal it. And we'll just put it down here. So it's still, did I totally wreck your train of thought doing that? Um, so, great, so now we have this, all right, and okay, so that's about as good as we can do here. I could multiply in that too, and I'm going to go ahead and do that just to get it out of the way. So 2x squared plus 4xh, so in, in case this is blowing your mind, what's happening is the 2 is being multiplied in here and it's going to hit each one of these things in the sum, so that's what's happening. So um, 2 times 2 is 4xh, then 2h squared, so plus 2h squared. I might as well multiply in that little 3 too, so plus 3x plus 3h. Okay, so what did we just do? We just found f of x plus h. Now we also want uh, some other, well there, you know, I'm just trying to write down every every little component we need separately. So we need this, which we just did, and so now we should find that, and then we'll be pretty much done. So what is f of x? <clears throat> f of x is, um, what is it? 2x squared plus 3x. So here I have 2x squared plus 3x. Okay, great. And now you can see that on top of this fraction I have the difference between the two, right? So I have them lined up like this. They are just begging to be subtracted. So what happens if I subtract the bottom one from the top one? Minus f of x. Then I have all this stuff and take away this stuff. You can see this thing cancels out with him, right? And this 3x cancels out with him. And now you can just write down what's left is 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3h. Okay, things are looking very good. And so we're ready to come back to this terrifying mess that we saw when we first started the problem is this over h. Okay, so now we know that that's the same thing as 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3h over h. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is cancel the h. 
And people who are good at canceling things, please bear with me because I'm going to do this kind of slowly because people, in my experience, um, are a little unsure about this at the beginning of the semester. So what I'm going to do is, you know, whenever you have a sum in the top of a fraction, you can break the fraction up into little fractions. So I think that makes it easier to see what happens here with the cancellation, so I'm going to do that. So I break this up into 4xh over h plus 2h squared over h plus 3h over h. Okay, so now you can see that in each place here there's an h that can be canceled. And whenever you have a factor in common to everything on top and it's a factor at the bottom that you can cancel. Frequently people make the mistake of canceling something from top and bottom where something on top actually doesn't have a factor, you know, so in this case it doesn't have an H in it, but I don't know why I'm talking about that right now, because we should just be focusing on this problem. So let's do these cancellations. Okay, so this is 4x plus 2h plus 3. Okay. Alright, <clears throat> so remember what we cared about is not just that expression, but the limit of it as h goes to 0. So let me grab this thing again. Okay, so, you know, I want to take these things are equal here. So what is the limit as h goes to 0? Well, it's totally, I mean, okay, so I'm a mathematician, and I should not be writing things that are not exactly true, so the limit has to be on both sides. It was there all along, we just didn't write it because we were being lazy. So what happens to this expression as h goes to 0? Well, this thing doesn't know h, you know, it's covering its eyes with its hand, and this thing doesn't know h either, he's never heard of him before. But this thing is multiplied times h, and so as h goes to 0, this part goes to 0, and what gets left is 4x plus 3. Okay, so what we just showed is that the derivative, otherwise known as this limit, is 4x plus 3, and then if you do it the easy way, you can check your answer. So what happens if you just use the rules that we know? So this 2 comes down and makes 4x, and now you subtract 1 from that, it becomes 1, so I won't write it. And now this becomes 3. And we get the same answer both ways, so we know it's right. Okay, and so that is the end of the first problem.